Hey guys, and welcome to another episode. Today in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make your transmission shift faster. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, my Honda, along with many other Hondas, have a thing called a slave cylinder, just like a lot of many manual cars. Now, the difference is that the slave cylinder and the master cylinder that I have for this vehicle is different. So this thing has a leg system in it. For instance, the slave cylinder that's built into these cars has a little oil restrictor. So what it does is it delays how much fluid can go in here at any one time. So it doesn't allow you to shift, say, at very high RPMs quickly. So say if I'm redlining first gear and want to go into second, the delay orifice inside of here, along with inside the master, will delay it and slow it down. Now today I'm going to be installing K-tuned aftermarket parts on my car. So the slave, the line that goes from it, along with the master, those are all going to be swapped over. So if you guys saw in a previous video, I relocated my battery that was right here to in the trunk. And that allowed me to have a lot more room to work with. So if we come down here into the engine bay, you can see that I've got my transmission right here. And to the left of it, I've got my slave cylinder. And if you follow the line, that goes down, up. And if you keep following it, it'll go to back here. And there is the reservoir. So I've got the clutch line, I've got the clutch master right there, and the brake master right there. So we're going to be swapping that out. So the internals and guts behind it with the K-tuned one. And if we come down here to the transmission, the line down there is gonna get swapped over along with the slave cylinder. So if you go in the car and you press the clutch pedal, you'll be able to see the movement on the transmission. That's pushing the fork to release the clutch so that the engine and the transmission aren't spinning at the same time. So this is gonna be everything that's gonna be replaced on the Accord today. So if we go from the beginning part of the system, we've got our master right here, and we've got the reservoir sitting on top that will screw in, or actually attach itself to this piece. Now when you press the clutch, this piece right here, which is the plunger, is gonna move in or out, depending on if you press the clutch or not. So that's gonna push the fluid either in or out, which is gonna push this little metal piece on the end in or out. Now, on top of that, you have a 90 degree bend and a 180 degree bend on this stainless steel braided brake line. So the 180 one right here is gonna attach at the master and the 90 attaches at the slave. All right, so before I actually get into the assembly and the installation of all this stuff, I wanna show you what the new system looks like. So I've got the master cylinder right here with the tube on top. That's where all the brake fluid is gonna go in so we're gonna have actual pedal feel uh, when we press the clutch. So we've got the master, with the 180 degree bend, if we follow the stainless line, we can see it goes right to our slave. And you can see that we've got a 90 degree bend on the left of it. So we need to take this entire system that's stock off the vehicle so we can install this better system right here. So first things first, I removed the floor mat that was down here, only so that we can get access to under here. So we're gonna be working with strictly our clutch pedal. So we've got our clutch on the left, our brake on the middle, and our gas on the right. So we're gonna be working with this one here only. And if we follow it up, we're gonna have two connectors that we need to remove. They're essentially sensors that are telling the computer when we have the clutch pressed and when we don't have it pressed. Now this is very crucial, like for uh, changing the car, turning the vehicle on, and all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna have to disconnect those two sensors and then continue on to the next step. So I went ahead and loosened them up just so that I could remove it easily for the video. But there's a little clip on top that you pull out on, there's one, and the other one is gonna be the little yellow connector right there, up top. So once you slide the little connection out, you should be able to slide it like that. All right, now next up, there's gonna be two nuts that we need to loosen up. There's gonna be the one right here. Now I already cracked this loose with a 17 millimeter socket. Take that off and then you can unscrew the sensor out of the way. Now just take note of how many threads you had on here initially so that you can reinstall this later with the same amount of threads. Now on top of that, there's gonna be another bolt or another nut on the back side right here. If you guys saw earlier that there was a plunger that's a part of the master, well there's a nut on the back side right here that we need to loosen that I already did using a 12 mil. Loosen it up completely and then that's gonna give you a little bit of room. Now next up we need to remove the pin right here that's fed from this side of the car to this side of the pedal and we need to remove that in order to take out the master from the vehicle. Now in order to do that there's going to be a cotter pin on this side of the pin that we need to remove so that we can slide it out. Now underneath here this is the little pin and the cotter pin that I was talking about. So it connects the pedal, so the pedal arm, 
to the top part of the master. So with that out, when you push on the clutch, it's, oops, there's a light. When you push on the clutch, it doesn't really move the master because it's not connected. So just take this, set it aside, and save it because we need to install this back in there when we put all of this back together. So now the only two things that are really holding the master cylinder in place are the two bolts, one on the bottom and the other one on the top, um, that are holding it up to the firewall. So once that's out, the master will be able to be extracted from the engine bay, and that's where we're going to need to move to next. Now at this point, the only thing down there by the footwell on the driver's side that's holding the master in place is just the fact that it's inserted inside the hole in the firewall. So we need to come up here and disconnect the 10 millimeter bolt that's securing the reservoir up here up. So I already loosened this up. You can go ahead and loosen this with a 10 mil. Put that away. And we're gonna have to pull this out along with the master all in one shot. Now, because of all of this is attached, you're gonna have to be careful and you're gonna wanna try and extract all of this as one unit. So I push the reservoir down and underneath the brake booster and the brake master cylinder. So it's sitting down in there. Now we've got that good to go. Now on this end, all we need to do is we need to take off the two clamps that are securing the brake line in place. So I'll zoom this in. So we've got two of these. We've got one of them right here that's attached to the transmission. So we all, get, all we have to do is remove this clip by pulling it out and then this line should be able to remove out of the way. And the same thing goes for this side. You can see that we've got another one over there and we've got a bracket that's securing it in place with a 10 millimeter um, bolt. So if you loosen that up, you should be able to take it out. I already cracked these loose so they're hand tight. And I just need to go ahead, extract it more, take the bolts out, and the entire clutch line should be able to be removed from the car. So we have everything disconnected from the line down here to the bracket that was connected here. Now if you want to know how I removed one of these clips that was secured up to the brake line, or actually the clutch line, um, it's the same thing as your braking system. So you're going to have clips like this that are going to be securing the brake line in place. Now the easiest way that I find to do it is to grab a set of pliers like this, put the top part of the jaw on here, and put the bottom jaw underneath the piece of metal that it's holding onto. So you have it like this, and you just squeeze and it will pull this piece out. Now if you do this a couple times, wiggle it, you should be able to remove both of them very easily. But as it stands, the only thing that's still connected right now are the two bolts that are connected up to the slave, this brake line, and the plunger that's connected to the fork right here for the clutch. Now when you're using a ratchet to take out both of these bolts, be careful because that's where I um, cut myself on. So this uses a 12 mil for the bottom and the top bolt. So these two bolts are holding the slave up to the outside bell housing of the transmission. So once you have them loose, you can go ahead and extract both of them by hand. There's one. And there's two. So we'll save those. We're not sure if we're gonna need them, but if we do, we have them just in case. And then if you wiggle that out, you can see that the plunger comes right out. So we've got the slave connected to the line We've got a flexible line down there, and we're just gonna be pulling all of this out along with the master and the fill-up bowl at the top. Now, I thought I was gonna be able to extract the entire thing as one whole piece without having to open up the system, which meant that the brake fluid wasn't gonna be able to go anywhere. So it would've stayed in the system and I didn't need to bleed it. Well, that doesn't work for my car, only because the line that goes from the clutch, uh, from the slave all the way up to the master cylinder, um, it crosses underneath the front brake line. So you can do one of two things, disconnect the front brake line or disconnect the clutch line. And that's what I'm gonna be doing only because we're gonna be taking this out anyways. So I'm gonna be removing the bleeder valve on the end of the slave and let it gravity bleed so all the fluid is gonna come out. So what gravity bleeding is, is opening up the system with the brake fluid in it, which is the same thing as the clutch fluid, and having the bottom end down there, which is what was attached to the slave, have that underneath everything. So make that the lowest point of the system, have it open. And as you can tell right here, I also cracked open the, uh, the reservoir right here. And that's gonna allow all the fluid that's in the system to drain out into my catch can that I installed underneath the car. So how the new K-tuned and the OEM slave cylinders are different is like this. So if you can tell with the, the old system that we had installed in the car, the pressure and fluid would come through here through the line 
into the slave. Now up in here is where we have the delay orifice. So it's only going to allow a certain amount of fluid at a time go through here and then into the actual piston where that is going to put pressure on the clutch. Now when we install this one on here, there's not going to be any sort of delay inside of here. We're going to have the fluid right here come in, enter the chamber, and then it's going to go directly into down here where it's going to push the piston out. Now there's not going to be a delay when you press the clutch pedal in this type of situation. So that's why upgrading to one of these K-tuned slaves is going to be beneficial to your car. Now areas where this is going to be helpful is say if you want to shift fast, if you want to shift hard, and the same thing goes for the master. So the slave right here has a delay orifice in it and the same thing as the master. So with the K-tuned versions of both of these, the car is going to shift like a dream. So with the entire system out, this is essentially a breakdown as to how everything works. So we have fluid inside of our reservoir that supplies fluid through this line directly up to our master. Now right here is where we use our clutch pedal and push that in, which pushes fluid through there, through the master, out of that little nozzle, goes inside this line, through there, goes all the way to the end of it, continues through this flexible line, and if we follow it, it goes directly up to the slave. And when the fluid gets pushed in here, that little plunger pushes out and puts pressure on the clutch fork, and that releases pressure from the clutch. So if this is the entire old system, the only thing that we're gonna be using from this is gonna be the little rubber line and the reservoir, and that's gonna be attached to our new K-tuned system. So we've got our new slave, our new line, which is braided, and we've got our new slave cylinder right here. So the tube, the breather, so the little rubber tube is going to be attached to this and we're going to supply uh, that right there directly up to the reservoir. Now we're going to mount that up in the exact same OEM location and that's just going to supply fluid to all of this. So as it stands right now there is none in there and that's fine. We're going to be putting some brake fluid or clutch fluid or whatever, it's the exact same thing. We're going to be putting that in afterwards once we install it on the car. So to make this install easier, given the little amount of room that I have, I removed um, the reservoir up top, I disconnected that from the line and was able to push um, the master cylinder into the firewall from up top through this little hole. I didn't have to fish it around or anything. Now I also went ahead and removed the slave cylinder. As you can see, it's not attached to the line. So I have that, I have that fed down there. I'm now going to go ahead and install the reservoir up top onto here and attach it up to the hose. Then from there, I'm going to push the line down underneath and make it follow the OEM position that it was in so that I can mount it back up and have it wired right here. And it's going to have to be connected up to the slave right where those two bolts are. So slide the rubber line over top of the nipple attached to the bottom of the reservoir. Slide it over top. And then just move that little clamp to over top of it and it's going to be securing it in place. So with the brake line now pushed up to the front, it ran along the side part of the front of the frame and it's attached on the back. So now we need to go ahead and install the slave cylinder on here. Now if you guys remember there were two bolts securing the slave cylinder in and we're going to need to reuse those when we install the new one. So when we're installing the slave cylinder, the easiest way that I find to install it is to first install the plunger and first on the, uh, on the clutch shift fork. Push the plunger into the slave cylinder and then align it so the two holes on top are going to be able to line up with the two holes down there. So I'll show you how to do it. You can do the bottom end first. You can see that it's pushed into the, like the little cup area. Slide it over top and you can see that the holes will line up very easily. So once you have it like that, just put the two bolts through it and tighten it up. Now that we have the slave installed onto the transmission, the only thing we need to do now is mount up the line that goes from the master up to the slave. Now in order to get a tight fit, it's very important that this nut is tightened up securely onto the slave. Now in order to do that, you can use regular wrenches, however you might have the risk of, uh, of stripping something. So what I like using is a set of flare nut wrenches. Now these grip the bolt a lot better than say a regular open-ended wrench like this. This will only grip on two sides, where you can see that this essentially wraps around the entire nut and gives it a good feel. So you're going to be needing a 17, which is this end, a 17, and you're going to need a 13 mil to tighten both of them up. So you hold the bottom nut that's on the slave and you tighten up the top one here that's attached to the line. 
So as that goes for the engine bay, the install is basically done. Now we still need to put fluid inside the reservoir and bleed the system, but we need to make sure that the master, which is attached to the firewall, is properly mounted up. So we're gonna go in the car underneath where the gas pedals are, and we're gonna go attach it and make sure that it's installed correctly. So if you can see right there, we have the master cylinder that's just poking through the firewall. So we're gonna be grabbing those 12 millimeter nuts that we removed from the old one, and we're gonna be pulling this one all the way through. We're gonna be tightening up the one down there on the right, and there's another one up on the left that you can't really see, but it's hidden by the clutch pedal. And now with both nuts attached to the master, it's secured in place. Now we need to install the little pin that we removed before that's gonna attach the master, so the plunger part of it, attached to the clutch pedal. And that's gonna make it so that when we push our clutch pedal, the slave is actually gonna be doing something as opposed to just sitting there, you know, as a decoration. So we have the pin and the little cotter pin that secures it in place that we need to install so that the clutch pedal will work. Now just a little tip if you guys are gonna go through with this install, this piece right here is the OEM piece that was attached to the master. This right here is the K-tuned version of this piece and it comes with the master. Now when I tried to install the pin and the cotter pin back into it, if you take note, these are different sizes. So I'm just gonna have it like this. You can see that the OEM one is slightly thinner. Now it's no big deal, all that you have to do is use the OEM piece as opposed to the K-tuned one and the cotter pin and the pin that goes through the clutch pedal is gonna work properly. Once you have the little pin and the cotter pin on the back side of it attached to the master cylinder, you can go ahead and install the clutch position sensor and you can go and reattach both of the wires that go up to here and here so everything works properly. So now that we have the entire clutch system back up and running, we need to go through it and put fluid in there and bleed the system. So just like your brakes, you have the master with fluid in it and every single one of the lines and the brake calipers need to be bled only so that there's no air inside of there. Because if you were to say use the brake or clutch and there's air in the system, you're not gonna have a proper pedal feel. It's gonna be spongy and it's not gonna be proper. So you could potentially be wearing out something if you don't do this properly. Now you can use, if your car says it's recommended for DOT, three fluid, you can use DOT three or four. The difference is one of them is mineral based, the other one is synthetic. And I'm gonna be using DOT four brake fluid inside my clutch system. So all that we're gonna do is, put that down. We're gonna open this up. So this right here is the reservoir. It even says on it DOT three and DOT four, right on top in the center. So open that up, take that out and we're gonna be filling all of this up. So when you guys are using fluid, make sure that you always use it from a new container so that when you have it in here, you're not gonna be using old fluid and you're not gonna have any air in the system. Because if you let brake fluid, if you let it sit open for a while, because the way it's made, the brake fluid will actually absorb the air and the air is gonna be trapped inside the system. And that's gonna be defeating the point of this brake bleeding process. So you don't need much in here. It's a very small system with not a lot of fluid, so just top up the reservoir. We're probably, have to, we're probably gonna have to do this a couple times. So there's that fluid. We're gonna leave that. And then we're gonna come back to this once we crack open the bleeder found on the slave. So just for reference, this is the OEM slave. And on here, you can see that we've got the boot and we've got our bleeder nipple right here. So all that you do is you open this up just like you would with a set of brake calipers to let any fluid and air out. And as soon as you have a steady stream of fluid coming out of this tip, you're gonna close this up and the system's gonna be good. Now if you choose, you can go ahead and let the system gravity bleed, which is what I did, and it works very well even if you only have one person. So all that you do is you put fluid in the master, you crack open the slave down there, you let it bleed out until only fluid comes out of there. And once that's done, you tighten that up, top that up, and then you put your little dust cap boot over top of the nipple. Just like that. Okay, so where do I even begin? My first impressions of the new slave and the new master is night and day different. Now every time that I used to try to redline, um, whenever I would shift, say from second to third, it would always like limit me and wouldn't allow me to shift into gear because of the delay mechanism inside the slave and the master. Now, with the new K-Tune stuff in here, it just, it shifts through like it's nothing. Now, I had to lower my RPM from 7200 to 5800 only so I'd be able to shift quickly 
but I wouldn't be able to utilize the power that the engine can make. So what I did was I installed the K-Tune stuff in the car. I jumped the red line back up to 72. Well, actually I made it past that to 7,600. And it shifts like it's a dream. You can just, you know, fire through first, second, third, fourth, like it's nothing. If you guys have any questions regarding the video, throw it down in the comment section below, and I'd be happy to help. If you guys want to pick any of the stuff up that I use today, you guys can check the description box. I'll have links to that stuff too. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. So I push the reservoir. That awkward moment when you use a wrench to try to take a bolt out, your hand slips and you miss. Nice.